NC State basketball's postseason run still doesn't feel real. However, they added yet another milestone to cap it off. You are locked on Wolfpack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Wolfpack Nation? It's time to get locked in with Locked On. Thanks for making Locked On Wolfpack your first listen each and every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Happy Wednesday to all. As always, I'm Grayson Boone, joined by former Wolfpack defensive tackle Kenton Gibbs. Kenton, we're still talking about this miraculous postseason run put on by NC State basketball. On Tuesday, the final AP poll came out with the conclusion of the national championship game on Monday evening. Our NC State Wolfpack are finishing the 2023-2024 basketball season ranked number 10. How significant is this? They went out there and they earned it at the end of the day. I tell people all the time, you cannot ignore the results of the games. And that's what the poll showed here that, you know, NC State didn't finish as one of the uh, teams that were in the final four by luck or by accident. This team very much so belonged there. And, um, you know, this was this was a magical special run that's capped off with yet another bonus for Coach Keats. And, and you know, he, he truly deserves it. Um, along with Wolfpack Nation being able to walk around with the pride of, in having a uh, top 10 finish as well. One thing about Kevin Keats is he's going to collect a bonus. And I believe that now puts him up to 400 k in bonuses in just a single postseason. And I tell you what, he earned every penny of that. NC State finishing this season, this season in particular, 10th is again, nothing short of a miracle, you could say. We've talked about the importance of capitalizing on this postseason success. We've talked about the importance of capitalizing in the transfer portal. We've talked about the byproduct of success being that some players will leave, coaches may leave, but that's that all means you're getting somewhere. It means you're means you're leveling up in a sense. For NC State to finish the season ranked, this is actually the first time we have finished a season ranked since 2004, so it's been 20 years. And it's the first time we're finishing ranked in the top 10 since 1975. This run continues to get even more historic, even after it is now over. Has it sunk in yet? Mm, Probably not. I just got my Final Four shirt in. That makes it feel a little bit more real. But it's still continuing to sink in. Nonetheless, the importance of finishing ranked, you look at national recognition, And I also noticed the other two schools in the triangle who we beat in our postseason run also finished in the top 10 of the final AP poll. National basketball heads have talked about, man, college basketball, the the product is so much better when all three schools in that triangle have it working for them. This is your prime example. North Carolina was the talk of March Madness. North Carolina State in particular was the story of March Madness. If NC State can capitalize on this momentum and keep their wheels on the road and maybe speed up a little bit, you're going to see more dividends begin to be paid off there. When you look at this type of scenario where you're seeing the national respect start to come in, again, it's that belief. It's that belief that it takes you from we're the island of Misfit Toys University and there's always something wrong and it can never be us to it's going to be us. It's our turn now. We're here now. We've arrived now. And that type of attitude permeates and spreads. It really and truly does. Because once you get that belief rolling, I'm telling you, it's it's that's the biggest thing there is, that confidence, that belief. And these guys have seen it. Because while we're losing three massive pieces in DJ Horn, DJ Burns, and Casey Morsell, you're still returning a lot as well. You're still returning more guys who played and had parts in this run than you are losing guys. 
And they can say, and they can have the argument of, this is why we have to do the little things the right way. We've seen what happened when we didn't, and we could only get it right on one side of the ball. And we saw what happened when we did, and all of a sudden, nobody in the country could beat us. And with all the talk about conference realignment and brand recognition and overall athletic success, this couldn't have come at a better time for NC State, might I add. And with the ACC's ongoing battles with the with the likes of Florida State and Clemson and whoever else down the road, for NC State to be increasing their own stock right now is humongous. It's paramount. Yeah. I have not seen the women's basketball poll come out yet, but you got to figure NC State will at least be within probably the top six, if not the top four. They should be in the top four because they earned every step of that road as well. To finish both of your basketball teams within the top 10, and then you have all the momentum rolling for football. We're going to talk about football here in just a couple minutes. We've been saying this, but it has truly never been better to be a fan of the NC State Wolfpack than it is right now. There is so much positive buzz. The feeling amongst the fan base, we talked about awaking a sleeping giant. It really does feel like we have all things moving in the correct direction. Yeah, and, and you know, the women's team finishing where they finished as well. I want to make one thing clear. This should be the expectation. Women's has created this expectation. Women's have created this, the the air of this is who they are. Wes Morris created that. He's created that in years where things weren't looking great, in years where, you know, there was a lot more things up in the air and there wasn't the leadership there and all that. That team was still making a tournament, even if it was a first round exit. That was the floor of that team. But you see what Wes Moore can do when he does have some continuity when he does have the leadership back from the year before, even if people look at him as untalented leadership, Wes will say, oh, okay, well, we're untalented enough to get to the Final Four. How about that? We're untalented enough to win our bracket. And so, you know, I'm expecting Coach Keats to get to that level as well, because I'll tell you, I'll tell you, North Carolina is known as the Hoop State. It produces more Hoopers per capita than any other state in the nation in terms of NBA players. So... Ipso facto, if you produce more in your backyard, you're really good at what you do. You don't let those kids leave your backyard. Come on, let's put two and two together. Let's be sharp about this, right? Like at the end of the day, you end up getting a lot of those uh, top players because you've shown them. You can, you can make a final four at NC State. You can win a championship at NC State. You can win an ACC championship at NC State. You know, it's it's a serious moment of um, when you get this rolling, the domino effects that this could have, you know, the, the everlasting effect of a missed McNeely free throw may be felt through Raleigh until the end of time. It's such a beautiful full circle moment for the sentiments that Jaquavion Smith had last year and saying that you don't have to look at a, a big brand in this state to experience success in basketball. This is exactly what Baby T was talking about. And so to watch this all play out in the fashion that it did, I'd have to imagine there are probably very few people that feel more validated than Terquavion Smith. He literally spoke that into existence for NC State. And, you know, exactly what Kenton just said, that's exactly the type of momentum you need to keep the top players within your state. Football has had an increased effort to close the borders and keep all the top talent here in North Carolina, basketball now has that very same opportunity if they can reach out and capitalize it while the iron is hot. So there's no two ways about it. This is a massive deal to finish ranked in the top 10 for NC State basketball. Coming up next, we're getting into some spring football takeaway. We both finally had some time to rewatch some tape from Saturday. We're going to give you our top three takeaways after a quick word from our sponsors. Our first sponsor of the day is FanDuel. It's nearly playoff time in the NBA and NHL, and baseball is now in full swing. FanDuel is the place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers can get $150 back in bonus bets guaranteed. That's right, $150 bucks, win or lose. You can bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. So what are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. 
Middle portion of our Wednesday show, now diving into some of the spring football game that actually did take place on Saturday, although much of our focus for a lot of Wolfpack fans was on the Final Four, understandably so. Much better weather than last year. Last year they played in a typhoon. It's hard to gather any takeaways from something like that. Sunshine and good weather this year, and you got to see the offense look better than you could have maybe even expected. And so we're going to get into our three takeaways here. Our first one... Grayson McCall is here. He is arrived on scene. And with Grayson McCall at the helm, the accuracy, the playmaking, the leadership, we're going to win some football games with him at QB1. Yeah, and if you were expecting Cam Newton at Auburn, congratulations, you played yourself. He's not that. He's not the guy that because he's here, he's going to be 4,000 yards through the air and another 900 to 1,100 on the ground. That's not him. But what he is, is a quarterback that's going to be on time, on target. He's not going to kill you. He's not going to make that decision where you're just like, now, Grayson, what under God's green earth? He's not going to make those types of decisions. And he showed that in this game. He may have been off a little bit on a couple throws, but those were mostly timing things that will work themselves out as he gets more ingratiated into the offense, as they run more routes together, as they kind of get a better feel for one another. Um, because he is a first-year transfer quarterback, but he is everything that he was advertised to be. He has enough mobility to where it is a threat. He has the the anticipation and the touch to hit some tough throws and throw into some uh, not necessarily so open window. He has enough arm strength to zip it in tight windows, and he showed all of that. And so I was excited to see what he put forth in the spring game because he looked – I mean, the weapons look phenomenal, but they were allowed to look that way because of very good quarterback play from all, really, all four of the quarterbacks that played. I I wouldn't say any of them played terribly, but I'd say the top three guys definitely did enough to where I'm like, we're going to be okay. We're going to be okay in the quarterback room this year. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. He looks to be exactly how he was advertised. He has a ton of leadership skills, and that will really bleed into a team like this one. He can deliver the ball. He's not going to overwhelm you with his arm strength, but he has all of the tools to make all of the throws. And you talk about him playing four years at Coastal. Sure, the level of competition may raise a bit into the ACC, but I have a ton of faith that Grayson McCall is more than ready to take over the reins here. You're never going to get the full bag of tricks in just a spring game. There's a long way to go before we get to the fall. But in limited capacity, I was impressed with what I saw out of McCall on Saturday. And I think he will be a very, very solid quarterback here at NC State. Our second main takeaway, the skill players in the running backs, the wide receivers, and the tight ends. They look to be the realest of deals. They look to be more explosive potentially the most explosive group here at NC State in quite some time. Yeah, the uh, the skill positions, I mean, they were more loaded than the crowd at Woodstock. These guys, absolutely ridiculous. Every time the ball touched somebody's hands, they're just that talented that you could not go and get, go to the bathroom or get your popcorn or whatever the case may be because we have, legitimately speaking, Two guys at every position that are primetime TV. It is it is mind-boggling to even think about from last year. It is mind-boggling to even consider Noah Rogers, everything that he was advertised to be. KC is KC. We already know what's going on there. Wesley Grimes, does he catch anything but touchdowns? <laughs> he doesn't care where he's out on the field. When he touches that ball, his goal is, is to go ahead and be standing in the end zone and doing this little dance. Because that young man, he wants the end zone bad. He wants the end zone bad. Joe Lee, we already know what's up with him. The, the big body, he can go up and get the ball. He knows how to high point the ball. He knows how to break tackles and all that. But then you got Juice Vereen. He looks like he's getting more comfortable in this offense. And everybody knows, if there has been anybody that's believed in Juice Vereen since before he even got on this campus – Whose podcast was the first to have him on? Locked on Wolfpack. I've been a huge Juice Marie guy. He's going to be a bad man on this campus coming very soon. And then the backfield with Waters and Raphael and company, 
I am very much so convinced it's 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 something unlike I've ever seen in that it's a great problem to have that there's only one ball to go around. It's a great problem to have. I've never felt this way where you're like, man, I guess we kind of got to find a way to get Cedric Gray the ball. Like that's something that feels insane to say when you watch what happens whenever he touches it. You, you're you in an offense where you say to yourself, you know, how – it's 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 almost hard to describe how different this was than last year, where Robert and I was asking folks, be relevant when your number is called. This year, I can promise you this much, if you're not relevant where your number is called, Mr. and I is going to say, come on off the field, stand right next to me. You're going to watch that guy be relevant till you decide you want to be. And guess what? We've got the type of talent and depth to do that as opposed to last year, where we had to keep watching guys play what we thought was out of position. Last year's tight end room, receiver room, pass catchers, running backs, it wasn't to this level. It was nowhere near to this level. And, and so to see that we got all these guys that when the ball touches their two hands, when they tuck that thing out of that right or left shoulder, it's danger. It's legit. Defensive coordinator's chest going to get a little tight. Like, please get them to the ground. Whew. He's done miracles on us. The majority of the buzz of this offseason and all the guys we added through the portal was primarily focused around the skill players. When you look at a guy like Jordan Waters, Noah Rogers, Wesley Grimes, Justin Jolie, and so on, all of these guys were brought here to lift the offense to potential heights that we have not seen yet before. And again, it's just a spring game. You have to take it with a little bit of a grain of salt. They look to be everything that we could have asked for and potentially more. Again, there's still months of growth that has to take place before we kick this thing off here at the end of August. But Justin Jolie looks like a monster. And I cannot imagine the the giddiness that Robert and I must have knowing that he gets to implement that into his system this year. This is all with the return of KC, who was one of the best wide receivers in the country last year. Wesley Grimes, Kenton mentioned it. It seems like the dude will only come down with touchdown passes. He broke off that 90-yard one from Lex Thomas that we'll talk about a little bit later, but he looks to be even more developed than possibly we could have hoped uh, for him to be coming over from Wake Forest. I think he can be a weapon this year. Dakari Collins, we saw his capabilities last year. He's going to have another year under his belt. There's so many names, it's hard to it's hard to make sure you're including all of them. And I haven't even gotten to the running backs. Jordan Waters, a fully grown man. He's going to run the rock with more than just the intensity we need to pick up yards, touchdowns, first downs, you name it, he can do it. Kendrick Raphael, he stepped up in a big way last year. He's going to be even better this year. Hollywood Smothers, he had a burst of a long run uh, on Saturday. There is just so many pieces to be excited about, and all of them under the same umbrella of Robert and I and the offensive playmaking genius that he is. Oh, man. Go ahead and just fast forward me to August. We've had the Final Four. Just just get me to August. I'm ready for football season. We got to see the type of numbers that these guys can put up when it really comes time to go. But the skill players look electric in every way possible. It is, it is beautiful to see. And our third one here, the linebackers this year, again, still early. They appear that they will feel the absence a bit of Peyton Wilson. What say you, Kenton? Yeah, I think that you look at the drop off from going from the big three of, you know, uh, Drake Thomas, Isaiah Moore, Peyton Wilson, to just the most talented of the three, Peyton Wilson, to now having none of the three. It kind of showed its head a little bit, just a little bit. It, it, it showed its head a little bit in this game. There were some moments where I know Tony Gibson was, was not too happy with, uh, with what was going on in terms of the ability to fill holes, the ability to read plays, the ability to read keys and be where guys were supposed to be. And even more importantly, being where you're supposed to be is important, but there's a saying that uh, in college and the NFL, your coaches generally coach you on the first three to six steps or the, the moment of truth, three to six steps. That's it. You've got to still make the play once you get there. 
you've got to arrive with some violent intentions once you get there. And I didn't really see that a ton from our linebackers. And, you know, I understand that it's obviously going to be tougher when you've got two all world caliber guys out in Aiden White and Davin Van, but I was I I was left desiring much of our linebacking core starters, backups, and different. The defense certainly is going to look much different without some of your top players in there in the spring game. When you look at Peyton Wilson, there is no replacing Peyton Wilson. We all know what he was, and that was the best defensive player in the country. So understandably, there is going to be a bit of a drop-off there. I think Caden Fordham will probably have a very solid year, but you know, respectfully, he's no Peyton Wilson. Nobody is. Yeah. So the linebacking core is really going to have to take a, a sizable jump to make sure the defense remains stout this year. Sean Brown moving down into that linebacking position, that's going to be a very key development of this defense. I have a ton of faith that Tony Gibson can coach him up, and we know the type of athlete that Sean Brown is, but you know, the, the linebacking core is going to have to, it's, I think that'll be probably the most work in progress piece of this defense this year. We know the defensive line returns a lot of talent. We know the secondary returns a lot of talent. It will be the linebacking core that really has to step up and, uh, and, and pull some weight here. And correct me if I'm wrong here, but I believe that the uh, Auburn transfers have not touched down on campus or at least they weren't involved in this game. I don't think uh, so. I, yeah, so you know they, those two I believe will do. They'll they'll help. They'll definitely help and and help that group make some strides in terms of of physicality and and making plays at the moment of truth. Um, again, I you know if there's any position coach that I trust to take the Island of Misfit Toys University type players and make them into ACC players. It would be Tony Gibson, but I still don't want to see it happen. You know, like I'd still like to see him uh, have guys who, as we've seen from from day one, really with him, guys who just fly around and are dominant from go. And rounding out our Wednesday show, we're going to have a whole lot of nothing, a whole lot of something after a quick word from our sponsors. Our second sponsor of the day is Game Time. Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball. This, of course, makes getting tickets even faster and easier now for all of you baseball fans. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. And with killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes all of the guesswork out of buying Major League Baseball tickets. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. You can see the view from your seat on your phone before you buy. Their all-in pricing shows your total cost up front, so there's no surprises, and you can buy tickets in just seconds with only a number of taps. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply, and again, create an account and use redeem code locked on college L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E locked on college for $20 off. Download the game time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Last couple minutes here of our Wednesday shows. Now time for a whole lot of nothing or a whole lot of something. Three topics. We'll tell you exactly where we stand on them. First one here, quarterback two freshman CJ Bailey impressed many in this spring game and leads you to believe that NC State may be content with keeping him at QB2 for the season. Whole lot of nothing, whole lot of something. Whole lot of something. I told you all from jump by CJ Bailey stock. <laughs> I am I know the price is going up significantly after this spring game by now. I am telling y'all this right now. I want to formally say this on air. Thank you, Mario Cristobal. Thank you. <laughs> you and your staff are the real MVP. Thank you. That boy is a baller. He can do it through the air. He can do it with his legs. I'm telling you, when he puts on about 20 more pounds of muscle, I, I mean this with everything in my heart and soul. His talent, 
plus the skill position talent, plus Robert and I's ability to just, hey, whatever our best group is, that's where we're going to force the ball the most. That's where we're, what we're going to make happen in our offense. I would be shocked and surprised if C.J. Bailey stayed here and played for three to four years and he did not rewrite all of NC State's passing record books in significant ways. And I, I mean that. I am, I have been saying this since they offered him and since he committed. I stand by that today. I say this as an early skeptic of C.J. Bailey when he was coming to NC State. He looked awesome on Saturday. So this is definitely a whole lot of something. And, you know, going into the portal cycle, I, I did believe that NC State – should take two quarterbacks as we see you you always need enough depth to make it through a season. We learned that the hard way a couple of years ago. Then when NC State got McCall and seemingly just pointed their attention toward anywhere other than the quarterback position, the realization started to settle in that okay, maybe they would give CJ Bailey a look at QB2. After that spring game, yeah, you understand why. He can sling the pill, he can run, he can make decisions. He can hit the open guy. He can fit it through tight windows. He can seemingly do it all. And so, yeah, you mentioned his frame. He definitely does need to add some weight to that frame or else, you know, playing that thin in the ACC could get a bit dangerous. But when you, when you have Coach Thunder on your, uh, on your strength and conditioning staff, I'm sure the work will be done there as well. But C.J. Bailey looked really, really good. And if you're looking for a potential quarterback of the future, I know – Triggers a little bit of PTSD since the last time we started talking about this type of thing, and he's wearing the same number. CJ Bailey is it. He looks like he could really be something here at NC State for quite some time. Second one here, the other quarterback of note in this game, Lex Thomas. He threw a 90 yard touchdown to Wesley Grimes, although perhaps Grimes did most of the work on that one. What do you make of Lex Thomas slinging the pill in the spring game on Saturday? Whole lot of nothing, whole lot of something. Whole lot of something. Lex, come on down. You see, you think that C.J. Bailey is the reason they didn't go look at another quarterback. I think Lex Thomas is the reason. Mm -hmm. Think about it this way. If they were not comfortable or if, let's say they thought very highly of C.J. Bailey and they said, all right, we want Grayson to be our guy, but we don't want you to burn your red shirt at any cost because of that. Well, what would that mean? Like you said, Grayson, there has to be a capable backup. They didn't look anywhere after Grayson signed, meaning they knew there was a capable backup on the squad before, uh, before or immediately after um, Grayson McCall getting here. They did not know what C.J. Bailey would look like in a college uniform yet. The only plausible explanation is the Thomas Gene Pool is once again Thomasing. <laughs> Let's just, I'm not saying we need to go and see if they got any more boys over there, but let's just put in a call, you know, like, hey, let's 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 see what's going on there. But seriously, I think the Lex is is, you know, that that 90 yarder, yes, Grimes did do a lot of work, but that ball traveled over 40 yards in the air, hit Grimes in stride over the shoulder. Let me explain to you all the importance of that. When you're throwing that deep ball, you number one, don't want to slow down your receiver. He did not. You, number two, want to place it in the area that is best for your receiver to catch it, and it's hardest for the DB to get a hand on it. Where is that? Over the shoulder to the outside where the sideline is. That's exactly where Lex put that ball. Hey, listen, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that, that Lex is the future, but I'm saying I – after that pass and what I saw out of the spring game, I think that he's a capable enough backup. A whole lot of something in that 90 yarder. It is something that Thayer Thomas told us all, especially not to do. I will not doubt a Thomas. I will not do it. We've had ample example on why to not doubt a, a member of this Thomas family. And Lex is just the latest. Whether he ends up QB2 or QB3, he did appear to be serviceable enough that you could run him out there and feel comfortable with him being out there. And if yeah. that does turn out to be a key factor in potentially preserving the red shirt of CJ Bailey, then that definitely could be a whole lot of something here. So it was it was good to see Lex out there. It was good to see Lex 
just letting it rip, man. That's exactly what you want to see Lex be doing out there. So, you know, it's, it's a whole lot of something. I don't know if it's a whole lot of super something, major something, but it's something nonetheless. And we're uh, more than happy to have him as a part of this team this year. Last one here. We've kind of already touched on it. Uh, a stark contrast from last year's spring game. This year, it appears the defense looks to be the work in progress. A lot of nothing, a whole lot of something. I'll say a whole lot of nothing because you're missing two All-American caliber guys and uh, Aiden White and Davin Van. Like those two, I don't think people understand how good those two are. And those are two guys that we've been high on on this show early. I told everybody last year or two years ago, rather, hey, Davin Van is going to show everybody he's one of the best uh, edge rushers and, and you know, run stoppers uh, in the nation most likely. And he did. And Aiden White, same deal in terms of his ability to just – he, he went from, like, he's a good corner to, like, oh, when he's on the field, whoever he's covering, whatever's going on over there, cut it out. Don't worry about it. It's done with. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking at those two and saying when they come back, they'll be much better, as well as the fact that Elijah Groves is so good. His tape gave me the same concerns that Peyton Wilson's tape did. They played every position, which tells me your school wasn't very good, and all the kids on the field that you were playing against look smaller, weaker, and slower than you. Those are my two big concerns with Groves. Uh, same concern, literally exact same concerns that I have with Peyton Wilson, and I watched him play in person. So I'm I'm here to tell you, help is on the way. Help is on the way defensively. Um, I think that they will be better than what they showed in the uh, in the spring game, and also. I think our offense is just that good now. So I'll say a whole lot of nothing. Okay. Your last point is, is exactly where I'm going with this. It, for me, it's a whole lot of something because Tony Gibson is still our defensive coordinator. And all anyone wanted to talk about was the offense. That means the offense is really something to possibly behold here because the defense, whether they take a step back or two steps back, Tony Gibson is eventually going to have them in the right spot. It might take a couple games. They will get there. We all know that he is the real deal as a defensive coordinator. We have full faith that he will figure things out. And so for the offense to get that much buzz, for me, that is, that's an even bigger deal than the defense being labeled as a work in progress here. So it's a whole lot of something because, A, the offense looks really good, but, B, I have full faith that the defense will get to where they need to go. That'll do it for us here on Wednesday. As always, thank you all so much for joining us. Be sure to hit that like button. Drop your comments in the comment box. Tell us what you think about NC State basketball finishing the season ranked 10th in the country. That is a massive deal. Tell us any thoughts you have from the spring game if you were able to watch it. Maybe if you were in person. Tell us what you thought you saw on the field. Tell us who really impressed you the most. Who you think could be breakout stars for this year's football team. If you have not already... Mash that subscribe button. We will see you all tomorrow. And until then, go pack. Go back.